Welcome. This is Panda Consulting's ArcGIS Workshop. I'm Frank Conkling, and today we're going to look at parcel extrusions and the range selectors. This is some of the more esoteric components inside of ArcGIS Pro and the parcel fabric, and it's just something we wanted to explore and, and try to help people understand a little bit more. Before we do that, again, down at the lower right corner is a QR code, which will take you to Panda Consulting, let you know who we are, what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. We are, in fact, a an ESRI business partner, have been for 25 years now. We have the parcel management specialty designation together with release ready specialty and the state and local government. If you are here live, please, um, this is interactive. If you have any questions, comments, anything you'd like for me to address, please put it over in the chat window. Chris is actually moderating that chat window and he will go and make sure that I respond to that question. If you are here also stay after the recording's done, we turn on all the webcams and all the mics and we just have a general discussion. So let's get started for today, all right? So what we're really talking about is a way that you can go and take your data, data that it's stacked on one another. And, and normally this would be for things like condominiums, stacking condominiums, attempting to go and represent them much better than we have in the past. And inside the parcel fabric, these are called strata parcels. And this, by the way, this works both with strata parcels in the fabric and it works just with any polygons inside a pro. But we're going to talk about the parcel fabric because it's better to do your parcels that way. So it actually goes and and when you set up strata parcels inside the parcel fabric, what you wind up doing is you wind up adding a couple of attribute fields to the feature classes. And they these this gets added to the polygon feature classes and to the line feature classes. And it basically what's really required for it to work with some of the tools is they require a field that will tell it what floor it's on. We also recommend that you add additional information such as condominium or elevation information on here. So for example, as a minimum, what we do is you, you have to put a field called floor order on here. And I'll show that to you in a minute. This is a long integer field. It basically is just one through whatever, the number of floors you have on here. And that floor order field has to be added to both the line and the polygons for the duplicate parcel tool to work correctly inside the parcel fabric. However, for the actual visual extrusion, we also recommend that you add on here the ceiling elevation and the floor elevation numbers on here to go and allow you to go and do some extrusion. So what does that look like? Well, right now here I've got, this is actually a stacked condominiums. The gray elements are actually the condominium units. The light gray, light, uh, gray here are actually the limited common elements inside of here. And in here, again, this is the stacked units that are in here. And you can see that, in fact, I've if I go down here more, let's go over here and, and do it over here. Let's go to our select. And let's just select these units here and see what we've got here. So what we've got in the units is we have got a parcel number field. Then we've got that floor order field that is needed inside the parcel fabric to go and allow you to go and stack condominiums. This is for the duplicate parcels tool to work when we've got this, when we've got an active record on here. Then we've got a floor elevation field and we've got a ceiling elevation field that we're gonna use for the extrusions. And then in this case, we actually go and put a floor number on here corresponding to the numeric value of that floor. 
recognized in the U.S. We rarely have floor number 13s. And often sometimes what you'll get is you'll get a first floor, which is really the ground floor. That might be a parking garage. It might be some mechanicals or whatever. And often that will be floor order one and floor order two will actually be the first floor on which there's actually units on there. So this is just sort of the, the regular type of information about there. So these, these attribute fields are not special in any way. They are just standard attribute fields on here. They do have to be numeric fields, so they cannot be text fields. They have to be numeric fields. And again, this is the floor order is an integer field and then a long integer field. And then the elevation fields are actually just numeric fields that are um, double, double precision. All right. So that's what you need to actually stack them. And you can see I actually have stacked ones. I've in my display, I've actually got it set up here. Let's go and set this up so you can see how I'm actually displaying and what I'm displaying here. I'm actually going and displaying it so that the floor name, this is my parcel number, and then it goes and, and has a dash and the floor number in there, and then the floor number value out of that attribute field, and then another dash, and it's going to tell me the elevation, the floor elevation, another dash, and it's going to tell me the actual ceiling elevation. So that's what you're seeing over here. This is just a way for me to quickly check these things. And I can see that in flat, in fact, floor number one has an elevation here, a ceiling here. The next ceiling or the next floor is here. And this is for floor number two and so on and so forth as I go up and up. All right. But inside of here, and again, this is the 2D view. There's not much on here that tells you that these things are stacked at all other than there's a whole bunch of them on here. The first thing we're going to do, and this is actually before we actually get to extrusions, we're going to go and look at one of the functions here called a range selector. Let's see over here if I've got this. Here's build them. And here is a range slider that we're going to go and use on here. Now, this is actually a layer property on here, and it will allow us to go and apply an attribute selection against the values that are being shown on our display. What does that mean? Well, that means that when I go in here, if I go to right click on this and go to properties, I can go to a range. All right, this range will allow me to go and add a selector and say, I want to go and start using the floor number field on here. And I want to end it on floor number. Let's just do them both the same way. Right now, I'll go from 1 to 19 on here, and I'll add that. Once I add that, I'll actually see over here a range selector. Now, when I have that, I can actually go through. And as I'm going through this, probably good for us to go and notice once I've added that range selector, I now have a range tab on here. I can tell it the step intervals, what's the minimum value that I want to go and look at and have it move up and down through these as I'm looking at these active ranges. So I can go up a range and you'll see it moving up. And an interesting thing about this is that what it's actually doing, let's go in here and clear our selection. What it's actually doing is it's actually applying a, a definition query against this layer on here. So if I look at this and look and see, do I have a definition query set here? Right now, it's just that but it's only setting it for a display. So if I select this right now, here's my, it should only allow me to select this one layer in here as it's doing 
Now, let's go in, select this here. This is my one floor. Oh, I don't have any yet there. So I should now have, in this case, I'm, I'm selecting floor number six. And here's the only thing I'm selecting here. I have not applied this against this general common element, the GCE. Let's go and apply it here. This is, let's apply it to the, uh, the, here, let's go to the properties of this and go to our range selector and add a range selector. Again, same thing, it's going to be floor number, floor number on here, let's add it. When we do that, it will now limit what gets shown on here when we go to select it. All right. Here is our floor number six. This is our GCE we're still seeing here. Let's go in here, go to our properties, go to our range and add a range. It is floor number, adding on floor number, adding this here. All right, now I should be able to go and do a selection on this building and it will give me all the floors all the limited common elements on here and the general common element for only floor number six. So when you were working and looking at stacked polygons, a range selector allows you to go and minimize and only see those features that have the definition query against them that have this this selector set and only let's go and zoom out just so we can show so i only have right now on floor number six and let's move up another one here's floor number seven eight nine ten i think on there it is on floor number eleven on this building, we have a different configuration. So on here, we can go and there's floor number 10, there's floor number 11 for us. And if you actually look at the units, the first two digits of those units tell us what floor it's on, on here. So again, it allows us, this range selector allows us to go and minimize what we're visually looking at when we've got features stacked on top of another on top of another um, on here. It's a way for us to go and minimize what we're drawing. It doesn't show us anything else in here. So I saw, Chris, I have uh, a question. Is there a tool that creates these special fields with the correct name and data type, or do you have to make them manually? Unfortunately, because this is a one-time deal, there is no tool, but it's only you know a couple fields that you've got to go and add. But the only field that really is unique or required for the parcel fabric is the floor order field. That's that long integer field on here. All the other fields, you can name them anything you want. Just make sure that they have to be numeric fields and such. All right, so, so how do we work with this range selector? Again, you can see that we've set it up so that we have certain numbers in here. We can tell what the minimum is, what the maximum is. And I think it's 90 or so, is it in one step? It's gonna step it at one time at, at, at one at a time. And we can step it up through there, floor number three, Floor number four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, what it's really doing is it's applying a selection or a query against the features and only displaying the ones for those features that have this range selector set up and for only those features on there that, that match these values. So what happens when you're done with this and you want to go back and look at just, you don't want just an individual slice, you want everything on here. 
Well, it turns out that if you go over to the selector on the bottom here, there's actually a way that you can turn off my range selector. And you can see it's range enabled. I can click on that and it will disable the range selector. And now I will get everything in here. All of the 18 floors on this one, including the general common element on here. Again, really nice, nicely set uh, on here. So we set it up so that we can select just the stacked features that we're looking for on here. But we're not fully done yet because if we want to go and extrude this, and, and by the way, this is a visual extrusion. It's not an, an actual extrusion into some sort of 3G object. This is just visually displaying this. One of the things we want to do is we want to go and look at setting elevation on here. And again, that's a property of the feature class. So right click, go to properties, and we'll see here there's an elevation property for this feature class. So again, we set the range property. Now we can set the elevation property and it's going to tell it the values that we select out of here. How are we going to determine where something is going to be visualized with elevation? And we have a couple options here. We can do it on the ground if we've got the ground defined relative to the ground, relative to the scene or at an absolute height. In this case, I'm going to do it relative to the ground. And then I'm going to use my field for floor elevation. And I'm not going to exaggerate this. I'm just going to go and, and have a one-to-one -one exaggeration going on. And I'm going to go and do that for my units. I'm going to do that for my limited common elements. I'm going to set them. Now, interestingly, you want to be real careful. Make sure you've got this set for, for, for each of these that you're going to want to visualize. All right. And this is going to be relative to the ground with my floor. Elevation. I said it wrong last one. Let's go back here. I don't want floor height. I want the floor elevation on here with one. All right. So I now have this set. So now let's go and see if about visualizing this and creating a scene on here. In order to go and create a scene, what I want to do is I can go here to view and say, I can tell it to go and convert this into a local scene. And will, it will take my entire map document and everything that's in there and convert it into a two and even a 3D scene on here. And I've already done this here just to go and show you. So here's the 3D layers, and I, I only copied over the, the three that I've actually am going to go and extrude on here. And these are the three that I want to go and visualize. And you can see over here, this is another tower that I've been building. And if I go in and look at a select anything on here, I've got no, no actual parcel number on it, and I've got no elevation heights on it or anything right now. We're going to play around with that a little bit. But go here, and here is the unit that I have. I have a range selector set on here. But again, I want to I want to look at some other things first. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the visualization. How am I going to go and visualize this? And it turns out that on here, when I go in a scene, whether it's 2 or 3D here, if, but it's it's a scene, if I go to my feature layer, there over here is extrusion. And again, this is a visual extrusion. And I can tell it to go and extrude this by the base height 
All right, so I can tell it to use the base height and tell it to do it according to the floor elevation. And that will extrude the layers on that. But really what I wanna do is I want my extrusion, my elevation is going to be the floor height. I want my extrusion to actually be the difference between the ceiling elevation minus the floor elevation. All right. Now, when you'll notice what I did is we also have calculated this floor height. We could tell it to make the extrusion value the floor height on here. And that might be a way for us to go in and look at this also. But here is the base height. All right. Extrude the specific value as a flat top. See what these different options will give us. No extrusion, minimum height, maximum height, base height. Let's look at base height. Again, this is turned off at the moment. And let's tell it to go and do it according to the floor height on here. All right, so let's make sure everything is set. Go to properties. Our elevation is not on the ground. Our elevation is relative to the ground. And it's the elevation is going to be the floor elevation on here. On the units, going to be the same thing. We're going to go to elevation. And it's going to be relative to the ground. It's going to be our floor elevation. By the way, these didn't carry over from the 2D scene. And then same thing with it's going to be relative to the ground with the floor elevation. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk about the extrusion. So again, just sort of so you understand some of these functions, the elevation is where this layer is displayed. Right, where the layer is displayed, the extrusion is how high it gets extruded out. So in this case, let's extrude it or again, this is base height. Let's extrude it for the height on here. On here, let's do the same thing here. Base height, and let's extrude it on the floor height. And let's clear out our edge so we don't have anything selected here. And now let's go and actually look at our range selector. Let's look at this uh, feature layer again, floor height. Set this. So now this, it's actually the fifth floor here. And there's the fifth floor elevation is being extruded to ceiling vert minus that on here. And as we go up, now, interesting, if we wanted to create a visual component of here, we might actually take our extrusion for the actual height and 
and tell it to just go and extrude it a certain value, type of extrusion. It's a minimum height, maximum height, specific value. Let's scale it, tell it, for example, to make this five feet on here. Height. and then a five foot extrusion. So our elevation is, here's the actual elevation and it's been extruded up to five foot tall. Let's make it one foot so you can see the difference in here. So you can see that that's now only one foot extruded. Here's the unit. Here's a common element on here. And I can use this combination to go in these different elevations, or I can turn this off and just have it automatically go and display this for me. All right, so Let's look at this area here. So this is, in this case, this is floor number one. We've not set an elevation on it. We've not set ceiling elevations or floor heights or anything. So let's just put some value in here. Let's say this is 10 foot tall, or this is 10 foot floor elevation. Ceiling foot is 10 feet. And our floor height is, is then 10 feet. All right. So that's, that's our extrusion and our visualization of this as far as how high this parcel is going to be. If I go and let's go back here now to my 2D and let's get out of here. Let's go back over here. Let's take and attribute these and just so we can see what this is like. Let's go here. Let's select this this, this, and this. All right, and let's go and populate them. That the floor elevation is 10 feet. The ceiling elevation is 20 feet. This is floor number one, and it's 10 foot difference on here. So this is now set at a floor elevation. And if we go over here and look at this, we can see that these are now all set for that same elevation. Now let's look at how you might do something like this in here. Let's create a record because we're actually making some, some elements in here now. Let's create a record. Test demo. Once we have a record, our tools, our parcel fabric tools are then available to us. All right, so let's go in. Let's go and duplicate this parcel. And we're gonna duplicate it on condo unit. It's gonna duplicate floor order. And we're gonna do this twice. And we're gonna start at floor number two or floor order number two. All right, it's gonna increment each time. Missing required feel. Let me go back one more time here. Floor order. The unit. Let's make sure it's in here again. Floor order is in here. It should be in here. All right, well, I'm going to do it the other way. This is the old school way of being able to go and do this without 
without the parcel fabric. This is duplicate vertical. All right, I'm gonna tell it to take and duplicate these verticals, do a 10 foot vertical and do it twice. All right. Tori says in the table, there was no space. Did you have a accidental space somewhere? Um, let me see here. Is it on the fields that there was no space? Floor order in the table, she says. A floor order here. It had no space, right? That's the floor name. That's not the actual alias on here. But that uh, might have been it. So let's go make sure that's turned off. Let's go and select these just to make sure. And we now have these three different ones here. Here's the base one. Here's the second one. Let's go and say this is floor order three. This is 21 feet. This is 31 feet. And this is floor number two. And then we'll take another one. This is floor order four. This was 31, 32 feet, 42 feet, floor number three. All right, so we have duplicated these on here. Let's go back over to our scene and see there in fact is we have now gone and created these duplicate stacked polygons on side of here. All right, so we can do that with all of these as we go move along. If we go back here, we can say, well, let's take, let's take all of these and do the same thing. And this was three, and this was 21, 31, and then this was two. This was four, this was 32, 32, and it was five. Again, just to go and see as we're doing this, these are stacking as we're going up on here. So we can go in and create these stacked polygons on here as we're going through here and looking at these. The elevations are being set on according to the elevation setting here relative to the ground using our floor elevation with no exaggeration. And the extrusion is being done against the ceiling elevation versus the floor elevation on here. And again, this is really nothing more than a visualization of what this is going to be. But you can see from here that you can very quickly go and create stacked polygons and have it display certain components. So just sort of to let you know also on here, for example, we have some transparencies on here. So maybe, maybe I wanna go and these condo units, I don't want to be transparent. Um, I just had them for visualization. So I, I can set transparency on there. Um, and with this navigator, I can navigate sort of the aspect of what I'm looking at and where I'm looking at it. Let's go and set this transparency down to zero also. All right, so that is set to, to zero. All right, so one more thing, let's go in and enable the range selector on here and we can go down and start looking at the various, the various floors as we're looking at these. 13th floor, this is actually the, this is actually not the floor that's actually showing up. This is the floor order that's showing up. And I can tell it there's 10th floor, 9th floor, and it going up and down. So if we go down to 
there's something on the other building that we had set up. And there's the first floor. All right. Any questions? Anything you'd like to have me demonstrate on here? No questions in the chat. All right. Thank you. So, again, just to verify, when we built them, floor order on here, this is inside the parcel fabric. We then went and performed the extrusion using the attributes that we had stored on here. To go back and forth, just to remind you, we're using ceiling elevation, floor elevation, floor number, and the floor height. Again, the only thing that's really required is some sort of floor elevation. And then you can define, I want to extrude these at a certain height. Um, but we just put them in there only because we have have in this project we have some units that are different heights some have a very high ceilings others have lower ceilings and we wanted to get a little bit closer on that um, built them again we can use either the duplicate parcels in the parcel fabric we can also use duplicate vertical uh, with the standard polygon tools and then we wind up going over and creating a scene a local scene in this case and we can look at the 3D on here and do the extrusion to see what it actually looks like by setting the elevation of the extrusion and how high we actually want to go and extrude it. And then we can be selective in what we're displaying using the range slider and range selector on here. And this is the range tab. All right. No questions. Thank you all for joining us and stick around. We'll answer some questions.